<coughs> good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good night, everyone. Welcome to the virtual tour of Mauna Kea. My name is Junichi Nomaru from the Rotary Club of Hilo Bay. I'm working for the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan and have lived in Hilo since 1996. Since then, I have visited Mauna Kea for numerous times during the construction and the operation of the Subaru telescope. We had planned the Mauna Kea tour at the beginning of this uh, district conference planning, but couldn't make it. So stay tuned for the district conference in 2023 that will be coming back to Hiro. One good thing about the virtual Mauna Kea tour is that you don't need to worry about your time and your physical condition and high altitude sickness. There is no age restriction for you to join the virtual tour. A most physical tour to the mountain is for the age 16 or older. And what I show you today is where you will not go with the tour. Another good thing about uh, the tour, uh, virtual tour is that you can enjoy Mauna Kea of both day and night that you can never experience with one day a physical tour. Please enjoy the unique environment of Mauna Kea by this virtual tour. So my background shows the route of today's tour. We leave Hilo now and head to the Onizuka Visitor Information Station first. So I always bring a bag of Porero chips or two just to show my guests uh, how um, atmospheric pressure will change on the mountain and to show them how Porero chips are yummy on the high altitude. We drive up Daniel K. Nome Highway or Saro Road. Mauna Kea is on your right. This is the intersection of Mauna Kea Access Road, where some of the tents that protesters put up are seen. station. Uh, the elevation is about 9,000 feet. So the building behind me is the Onizuka Visitor Station, which is closed right now. And if you have not been here for the last couple of years, uh, you may notice that uh, there is a new expansion of the parking lot. So uh, the, the below the building, and uh, there is an ample the parking place, parking space for the visitors. Um, many visitors uh, came down here for stargazing, but now uh, the visitor station is closed. The only uh, few vehicles are here, and uh, here is the the current temperature and humidity. So, oh, um, the temperature is only 59 degrees, which is a little bit chilly, but uh, um, I feel the still uh, heat from the sun and then the humidity is 52% which is nice nice and cool so um, and here's uh, elevation is 9,000 feet and uh, uh, because of the low pressure uh, now you see the expanded uh, the bags of potato chips and that might explode uh, maybe if you climb it a little bit further so here is um, the, rest uh, the restoration of the original Hawaiian plants and one of the plants uh, protected here is this. It's a kind of uh, the bean uh, tree that is called mamane. The mamane tree only grows at a high elevation like here. And then the mamane trees are important because uh, this is a nest 
and also the feed, the food to uh, endangered uh, parilla birds. So uh, the people here uh, try to plant and grow these mamane trees so that uh, they can protect the parilla uh, birds. So from now, uh, we will just walk down to the uh, cons conservation area of another endangered plant that is called uh, silver sword. These buildings are the, called Harebohaku. This is the lodging facility for the observatory staff. So this is a silver sword. This is a small one. And here's another one. This is this big. Silver sword is called this way by the color of foliage. There are silvery hairs on the each leaf. Silver sword is called Ahina Hina in Hawaiian. And silver sword is found in Haleakala and Mauna Kea only. And this is the big Mamane tree. After taking a break, let's get head to the summit. I just fast forward the drive to the summit that would take about 20 minutes. The plateau near the summit is formed by the glacier. Okay, let's get to the top. Here you will see some telescopes. Snow still remains at the time of the filming back in April 2021. There are some pu'us like this or craters at the summit area. Now I arrive at the uh, uh, summit of Mauna Kea. Uh, the elevation is about uh, 13,900 uh, feet above the sea level. So we are standing, uh, I'm standing now, uh, one of the ridge where the uh, telescopes uh, sit. So uh, behind me are the big telescopes, uh, but at the valley, at the bottom, uh, there are radio telescopes. So let me uh, show you uh, one, uh, one by one. Um, at the summit, speaking and thinking becomes very slow. So I fast forward the video after my narration on site and name the telescope now. This is Caltech Submillimeter Observatory, which already stopped operation. 
James Clerk Maxwell Telescope was originally built by UK and the Netherlands. Now UH owns the telescope and East Asian Observatory operates it. These small dishes are an array of submillimeter array that our conference our committee chair Aran Kusunoki worked for four years. This is Subaru Telescope owned and operated by the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. Keck telescopes are the largest telescope in diameter, which is 10 meter on Mauna Kea. Infrared telescope facility or IRTF operated by the UH. The one in here uh, is a uh, U-cut. So originally built by UK and then this is uh, made for infrared observatory. And uh, there is one small one here. Uh, that one actually is the first telescope built on Mauna Kea. The name of the telescope was uh, Hoku Kea. Now let me show you the current temperature here. Oh, it's 42 degrees. <clears throat> it's quite cold and the humidity is only 25%. It is very dry. So it's very cold. Okay, so um, here is almost uh, the top of the mountain, but the literally uh, you see that peak? That one is the real summit of Mauna Kea. Um, the elevation is uh, 13,796 uh, feet. So uh, I tried to walk up uh, to the summit. I don't know if I can make it be because there is snow uh, on the slope. Uh, that could make me climb up to the top a uh, difficult, but uh, anyway, I will try. Okay, try it. Let's go. Hmm, I'm going to go. So I again fast for the video. Wow, that's a nice view of the downhill. And then you see two more telescopes from there. One is UH 88 inch telescope. That is, I think, the second oldest telescope on the mountain. Another one is Gemini telescope, one of the two telescopes that is located in Chile. You will have a little chance to walk to the real summit. Commercial tour won't allow you to go there, and you need to beat high altitude. It takes only 10 minutes for one way, but you will be definitely exhausted by walking uphill. <sighs> okay. I made it. <sighs> This is a this is a real summit of Mauna Kea, the highest point in the entire state of Hawaii. Now I I see. Brown rocks, sand, cinders, and the telescopes. We can see those three telescopes from Hilo. Hilo, if the weather is good, it's in that direction. So now I came down to the parking lot of a uh, Keck telescope. 
So there are two big telescopes. And here's a, the visitor gallery that is open to the public uh, usually. But I'm not sure if it is open today. Um, but let me please uh, check it up. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, visitor center is uh, closed right now due to a COVID. Okay, let's go to another place. I am in the parking lot of the Subaru Telescope. Subaru Telescope was built by the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, completed in 1999. I was working for this telescope and I used to come to the mountain three times or even four times a week. But this building uh, behind me is called control building. <coughs> so observers stay inside the building where uh, is where uh, the control room and the staff lounge and other laboratories are located. And that building over there is a dome or enclosure <coughs> where telescope is located. The reason why um, our, the, the shape of the Subaru telescope is not the kind of dome or uh, 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 spherical is that um, is to minimize the turbulence of the air uh, flowing uh, outside just along the uh, <coughs> structure. So with um, the various tests using the model uh, in the wind tunnel, uh, we found that this is uh, the best shape to minimize the air turbulence around the uh, enclosure. So this is good for the uh, uh, quality of the uh, observation, <coughs> but the drawback is there is a flat roof at the top of the enclosure. That's why when it snows, uh, somebody needs to go up to the roof and then check, uh, make sure if there is no snow. Uh, there is a, a snow or ice accumulated. We are not able to open the main shutter. So when it snows uh, piled up, uh, somebody needs to go up the mount, uh, uh, top of the roof and then shovel uh, the ice. That is a really a tough job. Uh, I'm heading down uh, a little bit uh, and then start to walk to Lake Waiau. The top of the mountain, there are observatories there. And so I'm heading down. So this is another place no tour operator will take you to. The trail is rough and risk of injury. If you get injured, no one will help because there is no radio reception, no cell phone reception here. Now I came down to the trail, which is much easier to walk. Now you can see the lake. lake. This is the highest lake or pond in Hawaii. This is the lake. According to a website, Lake Waiau is the seventh highest lake in the U.S. There is some grass along the lake. This is the edge. The water is never clean. It's green or brown.
it is interesting here's water can you see water here the water apparently that comes from the hill this high so it's not very high or very wide um, some snow just sit there but uh, it is interesting apparently the water comes down came down from that slope and then flowing out here so this is the outlet of the lake water to the outside there are plenty of water running and here is a complete silence there is no bird there is no insect there is no motor vehicles noise it is complete it's a complete silence that's all for the daytime tour and i hope you enjoyed it physical day tour would end here and you will be heading back to hilo but the virtual tour continues with the evening tour let's see the sunset just watch when the sun set under the horizon the video is first forwarded for you the picture wobbles because I didn't bring a tripod with me. The summit becomes cold as the sun sink, and it may be windy. Keep watching the sun. Did you see the color of the sun change to green just before it set? I believe this is green flash. I have seen sunset there more than 20 times, but this is the only green flash that I ever saw. The sun set and the sky is gradually covered with stars. Sometimes there are special events in the sky. This was the encounter to a comet that was unexpectedly bright and we could see the tail even in Hilo. In April 2021, lilies were seen. From now, a magnifier appears just before a meteor appears within the circle. Please watch the screen carefully. You may not be able to see faint meteors due to the video compression and the limited bandwidth. Meteors are tiny rocks or debris in the space that burn while falling in onto the earth. Meteors are much smaller than comets.
watch for two meteors flying in the same direction. Probably one rock uh, fell apart. You can fairly easily tell which is a meteor and which is an artificial satellite. Unlike a meteor, the brightness of an artificial satellite changes slowly and an artificial satellite moves straight in a constant speed. Here's a challenge for you. Count the number of meteors and satellites appearing on the screen during the next 31 seconds. I tested the visibility of meteors through Zoom when the network was stable. There you go. This moment was the time during this night when meteors were seen the most frequently. Okay, please watch my findings. Okay, here's one on the left, one above the Keck Dome, one in the center, and you can see two satellites moving. Another meteor. And one meteor by the dome. So there are five meteors and two satellites that I could find. This video is a YouTube live feed available for 24 hours every day. On YouTube, search for Maunakia 24 slash 7 and choose the one with live now. So this is how you see the video on YouTube. That's all for today's virtual tour. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Mana care is a whole different world and all indifference and anxieties are washed away when I get there and see the vast telescope the landscape.